What I do is try to provide resources to help students who sometimes does not have enough resources to be successful in school. And part of this, part of what I do is things like this. Uh, so parents will know what's going on um, in the schools. So we do this, how to start school. We get a lot of students that come to our district that has not been in the country for more than three days. And a lot of the times the parents really don't uh, really understand uh, the school system. So we have these type of presentations for everybody. Even uh, parents who move to St. Cloud, sometimes they don't know, or parents in general don't know how, what entails starting school. Okay, so this is my first time doing this presentation. A couple of ladies came in early and saw me practicing. So if I struggle and you don't understand, we'll have someone else here. Her name is Lori Putnam. She's an assistant superintendent. She's going to kind of help me with the presentation. So we can get started. And if you have questions, feel free to stop me and ask questions. If I don't know the answer, um, Lori most likely will know the answers. Again, I say this is new to me, so I'll probably struggle a little bit, but we'll get through it together. And my warped sense of humor, I was born with it. Okay, how to start school. This is District 742. And the, this is uh, the purpose. This is a, a, an overview. I want to share this information with you. It will help you. There's Lori. Hey, sorry, I was holding the door. We could have put it in my lockbox, so my apologies. You can go ahead and introduce, I introduce, go ahead. All right, hi, I'm Laurie Putnam. I am the assistant superintendent for secondary education, so all the middle schools and high schools, and I was the assistant principal at South and then the principal at Kennedy. So hopefully, between the two of us, we'll be able to answer any questions you have, K-12. Thank you for coming. Okay, okay, key terms, purpose and overview. Key terms are attendance, you'll hear attendance. And I'll describe all of this as we go through the slides. Uh, open house and conferences, Skyward Schoolology and Seesaw, the school calendar, and volunteering. Uh, we'll talk about safety, transportation, student support, and the necessary forms you need to get your kids, students going in school. We'll talk about breakfast and lunch and other items, and we'll have a question and answer at the end. Before we um, keep going, can I just ask, um, can we just do a quick whip around and so we know what schools your kids are at, and if there are any other items that you want to know about that weren't, we aren't planning to cover, would that be okay? My daughter's entering kindergarten with Madison Elementary. Awesome, kindergarten, perfect, thank you. Kindergarten, they discovered. Okay, perfect. Three in Madison, two in North, Awesome. So we got a couple kindergartners. What's your North? Going into sixth grade? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Awesome. New to North? Or? Yeah. New to the district. Sweet. Coming from where? Wilmer. Welcome. They're the nicest tennis team. The boys' tennis <laughs> team was so nice. I had to call their AD. And like, this has been, like, one of them was basically teaching my son how to play. Welcome. Uh, kindergarten at Clearview in the Spanish program. Wonderful. Thank you. Kindergarten at Madison. Perfect, welcome. Peter Garden, fifth grade, and Chinese mission. Awesome, thank you so much. We do have a, a gamut, so we'll try to maybe target a little bit towards the elementary and then some for the middle, so. Okay, awesome. thank you. Absolutely. Okay, key terms. Elementary. When you hear us talk about elementary schools, we're talking about seven elementary schools in the district. And elementary schools are kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, middle schools, we have two in the district, and the grades are six through eight. And high school, grades are nine through 12. And when you hear us talk about secondary school, that's basically middle and high schools. We also have uh, several other schools uh, Roosevelt uh, Education Center, 
Um, McKinley for alternative learning. And then we can't find a Kennedy pre-K through 8th grade out in St. John. And also Riverwoods. And Riverwoods. And what's the other um, Claire's house. Yes. OK. Skyward, Schoolology, and Seesaw. Those are a technology that you can use to access information for your students. When we talk about Skyward, it's an online information service for families, including grades, missing assignments, uh, attendance, if they get any type of discipline referrals, and absences, you will see that in Skyward. In order to access Skyward, you have to request, I think, an entry code. See, I think the, I think, from our website, it's uh, isd742.org, and then on the website is a list of um, parent tools, and one of those is the Skyward Family Access that Henry is talking about right now. And then um, if you're new, so you've never logged on, which I think most of you, that would happen for most of you, you just click on this new family access, and it'll let you make your login uh, and password so that you can access the grades and attendance like um, Mr. Galloway mentioned. Okay, Schoolology is our secondary online learning system used by students and teachers. They'll show you grades and missing assignments, and for some classes, you're able to view all that information. You also must get your code to access Schoolology at uh, open houses. Um, um, I probably think that you should be able to get that information from the schools as well, if you go to the school or yeah. so for middle, um, the you'll get when you go to open house on Wednesday night, your teacher will give you this access code so that you guys can get that, um, and then Skyward you'll have um, you can just do on your own. And Seesaw for elementary online learning system that's used by students and teachers uh, at elementary schools. And you must get the codes as well through uh, the open house. Each school will have a parent night to teach you how to use Schoolology and Skyward. And I really, really would encourage all of you to get familiar with the online services. Because sometimes students have a tendency to say, I, didn't have, I don't have any work. Uh, I'm not missing any assignments. So if you familiarize yourself with our online services, you can kind of uh, track your students in and see what if what they're saying is uh, true. Any questions about those? Okay, attendance procedures. This is a biggie for the district. Daily attendance is mandatory. Uh, students from age seven to 17, the law states that they must go to school. And if um, your stu student is going to be absent, you must call the office or enter Skyward if your child will be absent. You must give a reason why they're going to be absent. And, and, and I encourage you all to call. Make it your business to get called to give us a, to, to let them know, let the school know that your student is not going to be at school. Excuse absences are illnesses, school events, and family visits and vacations. Unexcused absences: no school contact, late rides and overslept. We hear all of those, but that's no reason for them to be uh, missing school. It's just an unexcused absence. Uh, tardy, that means late to class, and it counts towards truancy. Um, Lori, how many 
relate to classes equal one truancy? Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Attendance truancy. Truancy equals three or more unexcused absences. Truancy's letters are sent to families after three absences. Um, five and seven unexcused absences. After seven, the school is required to file a truancy petition with county with the county. Remember that's after seven absences. And if a student does get seven absences, I've got to look at my notes. Some of the, one of the consequences might be that they are referred to, we have to refer them to the county, and they usually file an educational neglect. Remember, that's after seven absences. And in order to help parents kind of address the truancy or uh, tar uh, absent issues, um, they have programs like um, TMP, that's a truancy mediation program, and it identifies barriers to child school attendance and try to help the parents develop a plan so the students can be more successful and come to school. So keep in mind, this after three, and you get the first letter, five, you get the second letter, and seven, we automatically by law have to rep uh, turn it in to the county. We are, there are lots of folks who are, and just, lots of people heading to kindergarten, so we don't want us to go beat, beat this too often, but um, if you're, for any reason, having any struggles, there's lots of people at school who will help, a school counselor, a social worker, their principal, um, EEOC, their... Um, Educational Equity Outreach Coordinator. And then uh, Bilingual Communication Specialist, Somali and Spanish, if you ever need the, the um, language support. Okay, open house. At an open house, you get schedules. I think you said open house is, oh, it's under there. You get your schedule, schedules, you get an opportunity to visit teachers, and you can tour the school, and you fill out the necessary forms for your student to be in school. Also, high schools, uh, open house is August 27th, which is? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, from four to eight, and you can drop in any time. Um, middle schools is August 28th from 12 o'clock to 7.30. Um, it says schedule through Skyward or school. Yeah. So if you, for elementary and for, for kindergarten and for the uh, middle schools, um, that's why we want you to log into Skyward because then you can just sign up for a time that works for you guys, for your family. You get a, at elementary for kindergarten students, you'll have a half hour just to meet your child's teacher. Um, and that's, it looks like some of you may have already signed up. Um, and then for uh, middle schools, it's 15 minutes and then you just get to tour the building. So if you can't get into Skyward, just call the school and they'll find a time. Any questions so far? Yeah. Is that different? So we got something in the mail, it's like a goal meeting. That's it. That, that's the same thing as the open house? Yes. Because it's a different day, but. Uh, elementary is, should be the 29th or September 3rd. Yeah. September. I didn't want to be super confusing, okay. um, but elementaries and Kennedy's are th there's, uh, Tuesday the 3rd. Okay. Thank you for asking. So that, that's yeah. the same thing, right? Yep, same that's, thing. Yep. Okay, so I think it's next week. Perfect. Okay. That's it. So yes. Don't worry about that. No. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Another question. Yeah. Conferences. At conferences, you have time to talk to your child's teacher. You can ask about classroom behavior or friendships. You can talk about test scores and grades. And they occur two or three times a year. And again, I would encourage you. To go to the conferences, that's when you can get all the information you need. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Okay. Uh, it occurs two or three times a year, so you'll be getting information about conferences, and I really encourage parents to get involved in the conferences. 
school calendar. Our school calendar is available at Open House and online. And I'm just going to pull it up because it's the easiest way. Is that okay? Yes, fine. Can I just do that? Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we just, you know, we're trying not to make any assumptions about what people know and don't know. So we, I apologize if any of this is repetitive and you know this. Um, so our, the calendar is available online, and anytime you see an X, it means that there's no school for students. So some of these are kind of sneaky days, like September 27th is a professional development day for teachers. So kind of out of the blue, a Friday, you guys wouldn't have school. So we just wanted to make sure that people were able to plan ahead. And then we have some early release days, um, like here on November 22nd, you'll see is an early release day. Um, and then breaks are shaded, um, kind of the diagonal line. So anytime you see the shade, it means it's a full vacation. Um, and then we are planning to end at the end of May unless there's lots of snow days and weather days, and then we'll go into June. And then the code is here at the bottom. Questions of the calendar? Kid stop is open for those of you with littles. Um, they're open all those days except for next week, which is a challenge I know, at least it was for me as a parent. Uh oh, see, I keep messing this up. Every time I, I put out. Present. There we go. There you go. And that's why I say, really, it's really to your benefit if you get familiar with Skyward and our website. That'll help. That'll answer a lot of your questions. When you don't understand if there's school this day or that day, it's really, you just get familiar with that because your kids' grades and everything is right there. I encourage you to really get familiar with that. Visiting and volunteering. We encourage families to visit our schools before and after class or during lunch. You see lots of parents coming in during lunch and the kids, the students just love them and they see their parents coming in for lunch. Uh, to enter the school during the day, you must bring a valid ID to check in at the office, check in at the school, and we ask for ID to ensure all of our students remain safe. So when, when you come in, um, please know that nobody is checking for no one's looking for uh, citizenship or trying to get anybody into trouble. Um, what people are, when they ask for ID and they scan something, um, all it does is it's looking for a record of crimes against children. So it doesn't even look for felonies that are unrelated. It doesn't look for um, misdemeanors, nothing like that. It just is um, if, there, if somebody has any record of, of a crime that's um, directed at children, then we have a flag and it alerts the principal and the Um, security and the local police department, but that so that's why um, that's there. Okay, volunteering is when you visit your child's classroom or go on a field trip with your with your student. And if you want to volunteer, you must complete a background check. That's just a safety precaution for all students and yourself as well. Um, the school can help you complete and pay for the background check if it is needed. So don't hesitate if you wanted to um, volunteer, feel free to volunteer. And if your child is going on a field trip, I would encourage you, if you have the time, to go on a field trip with your student. It's 20 bucks, $20 the first time, but again, the school will help pay for it. And then if you volunteer even once after the background check each year, um, then it's auto there's no more fee. It's just automatically renewed each year for you. This, in my opinion, is the, the best thing that ever happened in school. I think this is one of the most important things that um, we take pride in in the district, is making sure all students are safe. Because when you send your students to school, they, you put the trust in us that we're going to keep your students safe. So we ensure our students are all are safe for all, our buildings are all safe for all students. We practice what to do in case of fire, severe weather, or intruder alerts. We make sure to keep this practice as calm and orderly as possible. Police, train, police in the buildings are trained to be in the schools 
They're called SROs, or School Resource Officers. They're in secondary school and visit elementary schools very, very often. They're there on a regular basis. These school resource officers are there to ensure all students are safe and are there to help the students and staff them. If you need to change your child's plan for after school, you must tell the school that, that morning. Uh, we cannot spend, send your child home with a stranger and we want, ever, we want every child on the bus to arrive home safely to an adult. That's another thing. Sometimes parents, uh, someone will come and pick students up and if we don't have uh, them in our system saying it's okay to pick them up, even if they are a sibling, an uncle, or an aunt, we won't let them go. Unless you call and tell us it's okay. And in some cases, I've seen they don't do that either. So you gotta make sure that uh, the people that are gonna pick your students up are on the, on the car, right? On the, uh, the emergency contact. Emergency contact. Yeah. Is there a limit on how many people you can have on there? No, I, I've seen up to six, seven. Um, people can go pretty deep down the family and friend tree just in case. Um, and then the other big thing that I know that, like, I haven't been in, especially for elementary schools, you know, for middle schools, a little easier if you need to end up at home by yourself right after school. But for those of you with littles, um, if you know, your teacher will ask for a form saying what your child does every day after school, whether it's kid stop or go home on the bus or they're going to be picked up or walk, which is odd for littles. Um, and if you're going to change that, if you could let them know, I know it says in the morning, but I just want to reiterate that because sometimes people will just call and they get, sometimes things happen, but um, if you call after one it's re and the school gets out at two, it's really hard to make sure that that message gets communicated to the right person on time. And we never ever want to put your child on the bus and have nobody be home. So even if you get an email or a, a note to the office in the morning before early, as early as you can, um, knowing we fully understand that things come up now and then. Transportation. <clears throat> we provide bus service for every child living over a mile from the school. The bus is the same, is the same as classroom, and all students are expected to be safe and kind on the bus. Now, I need to say that again because I confused myself. The bus is the same as a classroom. And all students are expected to be safe and kind on the bus. You may drop off and pick up your child at school if you like. Students must be dropped off and picked up on time so we can assure their safety. How many people are planning to use the bus? Anybody planning to use the bus? Did you get your bus through transportation card in the mail? Yeah, and I need to change so that he gets dropped up and take care because it was just set up before I didn't do anything. No problem. There's a form online or just give the transportation after the call. Yeah. So, like, where we live, like, to put, put us on the bus is, like, right next to us. But then when he gets dropped off, it's, like, on the other side of the road, which is, like, seven, eight blocks and he's only five. Oh, well, whatever. It's, it's pretty like fun. way down the street. It's like, oh. yeah. I would give them a call. So I'm like, I would call the office okay. and just see if there's any, because sometimes it's not hard to just move it back a little bit. Okay. Um, and they're rowdy so much, they're still, they're still making some changes. So just call and see if there's anything they can do. And if not, let us know. Okay. Yeah. Great. I know it's hard for everybody, you know, but <laughs> yeah. that's hard. You don't want your little one crossing the street. And then the rest of you are going to pick up, drop off, or box, okay. I have a question. Yeah. My husband and I kind of work opposite shifts, and I think he will primarily be um, definitely dropping her off in the morning, but in, if need be in the afternoon, can she be bussed? Yes. Okay. Yep, you can mix and match. Oh. Yep, you just have to make sure you set up the busing ahead of time. Sure. So that, you can, so that it's ready when you want it. 
you don't you can have it all year and never use it. Oh. But as long, you just have to have your child assigned to that room so they let your child on the bus. Sure. Yeah. And then for pick up and drop off, just check with your school because every school has different hours. I know Kennedy opened their doors at 7.05 and school didn't start till 7.30. Um, some schools open a half hour before, some schools open 45 minutes before. So just you know, depending on when you need to drop off, just make sure you know what those hours are because it might be more convenient than you don't. Supports for students. <clears throat> if your child is having a hard time at school, talk to your top child's teacher, school counselor, social worker, EEOC, bilingual support specialist, or the principal. And I always say if um, your student is having, it, it has developed a relationship with a certain teacher or a certain individual in the building, tell them to talk to them. And I'm pretty sure that person will get the message to whoever it needs to go to. Students with learning or behavior concerns are eligible for special help. Some schools have tutoring during the day and after school. And be sure to let someone know if you think your child is struggling at school. That's another key component that I always encourage parents. Uh, if they identify that their, their student is having um, some struggling academically or even behave, having some behavior problems with someone else trying to bully them or something, um, be sure to let someone know. And I also want to add on the other end that we offer academic acceleration for students who need a little bit more challenge starting in second grade. So second on up to 12th grade, if you think your child is starting maybe because they're bored or they're not challenged enough, that we also have services for, for students on, on either end of, of um, a learning spectrum. Because we all know that students grow and develop at different rates and in, in their own time. Um, so we are sensitive to that. Forms. Free and reduce form, lunch forms. Um, you get those during the uh, open house or you can fill them out before the student comes to school. Uh, they are available online. They are mailed, they can be mailed to your home and given out at schools. Um, also complete this form to have reduced or no fees for food and activities. Uh, students must have their immunization shots as well. And that's required by state law so to be in schools. Is that form difficult to fill out? Excuse me? Is that form difficult to fill out the one for free and reduced? And is there help? Yes, they just have to fill it out. Uh, it would be a school counselor or a EEOC or a bilingual support specialist will help you fill those forms out. Breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch are available every day for every student. All kindergarten students receive free breakfast. Lunch is 20 minutes each day. Students must bring their own lunch or get uh, or get lunch from, from school. A lot of students like to bring their own, even if they are on free and reduced lunch. They like their own home cooking to bring with them. Yeah. If you need, can I, I jump in for one second? Since, since a lot of you have like kindergartners here, um, it's awesome if you can start, if you haven't already started to teach them to open their own um, fruit cups or sandwiches, um, because that 20 minutes does go fast, so the more you can teach them to be independent, the better um, their lunch experience will be. And I did, I learned the hard way my first year as an elementary principal because I spent most of my time in secondaries. I learned the hard way that you don't serve soup or maple syrup. 
the first couple of weeks of school. So I did go through the lunch menus, and unbelievably, there, and there was chili on day one and maple syrup on day three when I left. So we got that fixed. So because you know the kindergartners, you know, by the time they get to their table, like it's it's over. So uh, we we do have very um, little small people friendly lunch menus planned for the next for the first two weeks. Is there any difference between free lunch and regular lunch? No, thank you. That's a great question. So there is no difference between the food that's served and, and there is no identifying of students. So um, it used to be when um, students would start to run out of money in their lunch account, um, we would stamp their hands. So my kids often came home with stamps on their hands because as busy people, sometimes we forget or sometimes money is short. And so my kid would come home like with a stamp, Mom, you got to put money in. Um, and we don't do that anymore. You might get an email or a phone call, and just a reminder, but there's always um, support for, for families if um, you need support with food um, and you don't qualify for free or reduced lunch. And we will never, ever, ever, even if your child is, even if your child does not have lunch money in their account, we will never withhold food. All, every child gets the same lunch as every other child, um, regardless of financial status. I think Lori okay. just said the next one. Yeah. Right. I'm going to read it too. Yeah, we have to read it. Sorry. So if you need to pay into your child's lunch account because you do not receive free lunch, you may do it online through the website or at your child's school. That's again why it's very important that you uh, learn the online Skyward so you can see so you can see that and pay for the lunch if necessary. Every child will be given a lunch even if the family owes Sorry. money. And guess what? The hand won't be stamped. Right. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who, if you can look online and see the breakfast and lunch menus, but for elementary school, we always serve two options, a hot option and a cold option. Um, so your child will, look, will be asked in the morning, um, did you bring your own lunch or do you want hot lunch or this cold lunch option is like a sun butter sandwich or a fruit parfait. Um, and then for middles, I see some, um, we've got some older students here. Um, you guys actually usually, you have four choices. You all, we add a salad bar starting at fourth, some schools do fifth grade, um, all the way up to grade 12. And then you guys have the option of a la carte. So if your parents decide, a few you guys' parents, if you decide your child, um, you want your child to have a la carte, um, they can go through and get like chips or um, frozen grapes, um, different juices, things that we don't serve, still healthy, but things that we don't serve on the lunch line. But that's a decision that you make as a family. Um, questions about lunch or breakfast? If you have the bus, will they get there in time to eat breakfast? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. And different schools do it differently. Some schools will have um, breakfast in the cafeteria, so all the kindergartners will eat together. Um, other schools will have um, uh, breakfast in the classroom, and then students can get their breakfast, and then just take it to the classroom. For upper grades, you just grab a breakfast and go. Yeah. And kindergartners, you can decide if you're feeding your, your child at home, you can decide you don't want them to have double breakfast. Um, or you can say, yeah. Eat as much as you <laughs> And for your information, students are not allowed to eat on the bus either. So. Yeah, it's messy. Yeah, yeah, I think this next one, I was going to talk about peanut free, is it? Okay. It's coming up. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yep, the last one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hours of attendance are different at each school. View the website or talk to a staff member if you need this information. School supply lists are on the website and at stores. I know I've seen them at Target and at Walmart. Um, if you cannot afford supplies, please tell your child's teacher, teacher, counselor, EEOC, bilingual communication support specialist, or principal. They will get you some help. Send extra clothing if your children are young. This will help keep your child clean and dry throughout the day. And schools are not safe. Please do not send peanut products to school. I know when I was growing up, one of the things that uh, we used to get cracked all the time was peanut butter and jelly. Uh, so, uh, schools are, so a lot of students are allergic to any uh, peanut products. So we tell you that, we tell uh, parents that 
schools are peanut free. To this day, I eat peanut butter and jelly. Any other questions? <laughs>